scary situation outside of uh, Tampa uh, Gentlemen's Club. There's the guy in the red shirt rolling up with a shiny red mask, had a gun in his hand. Security guard fought him off and actually, uh, as you see the gun on the ground, got rid of the gun and they jumped on him. But as you can also see as we watch this last part again, the gun actually went off. Look for the smoke as he's swinging it once the security guard has it. Watch that. So who's this would be murderer? Uh, his name is Michael Rudman. He's 44 years old and he was arrested on multiple felony charges here. He had previously been served with a risk protection order. There's his ass, which is issued when law enforcement requests a person's guns be taken away because they pose a danger to themselves and others. I think that risk protection order was uh, rightfully put in place there. Um, so Rudman had the words kill and dark one written on his arms as he approached there. And he was also wearing this mask, as I point out the shiny mask. Let's get a close up of that mask. It's a devil's mask there. And uh, oddly though, he'd also visited the strip club the night before. So maybe some kind of beef he had with someone in there. Who knows, but he was definitely going in there to cause some harm. So also at their press conference though, police said that they found a bunch of other weapons uh, in his car. And obviously it could have been much worse if he got to those weapons. Let's watch them talk about it. There's no question in my mind that had it not been for the brave man you see standing next to me, that we could have been here discussing a mass shooting in the city of Tampa. When our officers arrived, they located two additional fully loaded magazines in his pocket. Inside his truck, they found nine knives, two gun holsters, and loose ammunition. While we have no concrete evidence at this time of any type of ideology that would have motivated Redmond, we do know that he visited Mons the night before. And uh, that security guard was aware, saw him. He didn't brandish it at the guard, Adrian, but uh, he noticed it and they jumped right on it. This is tough stuff, man. Yeah, for real. And uh, you know, very, very fortunate to have that security guard uh, there and also to have his level of courage. Like he intervened, he saw the gun and he went for it. He did his job, uh, you know, and it makes me think about the Uvalde officers and the thought yeah. that, hey, it would be great to have somebody this brave to intervene because it was clear that that man was likely going in there to commit some kind of fast shooting without a doubt. And that's and and look, we know the narrative is always um, a good guy with a gun will always stop the bad guy with the gun. Yeah, it's much harder when you have to, or unarmed and you have to snatch around at a gun. But maybe if you're positioned the right way, if you know what you're doing and you're looking to get something else done, and that's your job, maybe it might help out. But just imagine the other folks standing around if then the security guard gets to shooting. And now we got cross gunfire because we don't imagine that possible scenario because we live in a, a Sylvester Stallone movie. That's what we think everything is going on.